Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. This is Deanna Maldonado, State Director for the Benefit Bank, and Lenore Durfler is also with us, and she's our regional coordinator and um, helping with a, a, a lot of the a lot of the beginnings with the Benefit Bank. Uh, I'll get into it uh, with the presentation, and as we go along, feel free to um, uh, ask questions because we definitely want to tailor this conversation and this. Uh, uh, PowerPoint to be for you and beneficial for you and, and uh, good use of your time on it. So with that, uh, Lenore is here if you want to say hello. Hi everyone and welcome. We're so glad to have an opportunity to tell you about the Benefit Bank of Texas and um, the great things that are happening out there as a result of it. Okay. So what the Benefit Bank is, is a uh, secure web-based portal and counselor assistant program that connects low to moderate income families with worker supports and benefits. And uh, through the research that was done a couple of years ago, there's some key important factors that, that surfaced up in the research. Uh, first of all, finding a web-based portal that would be a good fit for Texas, uh, knowing that with a counselor assistant program, uh, a program or portal that there's the uh, uh, the success outcomes that are so much needed for Texans, uh, and to be able to have a one-stop service to where it'll, you know, eliminate or reduce the frequency of times that families and individuals have to be finding about and accessing the services. So with that, uh, we also learned that neighbors helping neighbors in places where people live, learn, work, play, or, and pray are true, uh, the true essence and fundamental uh, component of making the Benefit Bank a successful outreach program. Okay, so then, oh, right here. Um, and, and again, welcome everyone. Uh, Lenora Durfler and I are, are here to uh, go through the PowerPoint and also to answer any questions that, that you may have along the way. Um, the Health Institute is basically the core mission is to improve the health of Texans and their communities and the Benefit Bank is a program that aligns with the core mission of the Institute and also has the, the outreach statewide in addressing and servicing those needs. Uh, and with the Benefit Bank, we again looking at different programs and, uh, and uh, web-based portals uh, you know, across the nation that were being used, we really wanted to make a difference where we do overcome poverty versus managing poverty. We want to find ways that we can get people out of the perpetual cycle and put them into pathways of education and um, sustainable uh, living uh, job wages. Uh, the current situation where it is right now uh, with regards to untapped uh, uh, dollars that Texans are leaving on the table is at 8.3 billion. And over half of that is in food uh, stamps. So, and the research that was done that led Texas Health Institute to uh, bring the benefit bank to Texas is two things. It was uh, food insecurities and accessing benefits. So when this research was done back in 2009, um, the number was at six billion. And in two years, it's grown to 8.3 billion. And again, with uh, over half of this amount being in, in food insecurities. Um, and knowing that when you help out an individual or a family in one category, you're doing the silo effect and we're bringing this platform to be able to have a, have a bandwidth of uh, benefits and worker supports to do the outreach and connection. Again, uh, just showing the challenge with men, which many of you know already that you have families and individuals who have two, three, you know, jobs, um, have to look for transportation, uh, have babysitting, um, you, know, um, you know, opportunities that they have to look for. And, uh, and even just finding where to go, what it is that's offered, and you know, hours of operation, what have you. So you have families 
just pretty much being disenfranchised or having so many obstacles that they have to get through just to access the benefits. Uh, and even when you get there, it's about filling out applications, you know, have, they have to make sure they're correct. If there's one slight error, it, they, you know, gets thrown back out, they have to start all over again. And so um, what the Benefit Bank does is kind of does a comprehensive platform of these applications. And if you look to your right there in, sh in gr uh, shaded in gray, there's a, uh, a new program that the Benefit Bank is bringing and it's called the Veterans Education Assistance, which we have just uh, recently, like this month, received funding for it. And I'll tell you more about it, but we'll be bringing out that program on Veterans Day of this year. So in doing the research and finding um, all the you know different obstacles and the challenges for Texans and uh, accessing them to benefits, we found a, a simple you know a simple but yet complex solution uh, that it's a tool that supports workers and so when a, an individual is working and that they know that they have uh, a livable earning wage uh, I mean then they're able, able to access to benefits to stabilize their family their household have a safety net well what in turn that does it strengthens the communities by having a, the economic impact because you're drawing down those dollars and you're going to the HEBs, you're going to the Walmarts, you're going to the, you know, your local grocer or patronizing the local businesses when you're putting those dollars at work in your communities. Um, what the Benefit Bank does is a counselor-assisted one-stop service, and I'll, in, some, in some upcoming slides, I'll show you some screenshots of what it does uh, in pertaining to this slide here. It is an eligibility calculator where someone will come in and do a, and a counselor will do a two minute quick check where it'll kind of give them some preliminary information of what they're potentially eligible for. Uh, and in turn, they can at that point in time can, uh, proceed with the application process or they can come back at a later time with all their supporting documentation and, and start the application process. And one thing also of note is that it is a free income tax assistance program where the threshold is up to $60,000 that anyone, you know, at the privacy of their home or, a, you know, internet library or whatever coffee shop that, that they have access to the internet and a PC that they can do their own income taxes up to the threshold of $60,000. I know that there's some other tools that uh, it goes up to 50000 that they could do it for free, but uh, uh, it, it has a, a, a little higher threshold. And again, keeping in mind with the core components that all of this is offered in places where people live, learn, work, play, and pray. I wanted to... Um to kind of expand on what Deanna is saying about the Benefit Bank. Um, the counselor assistance piece of it was very important to Texas Health Institute when we went through the um, process of, of analyzing what, what portal or what system we thought would be best. And we believe with the complexity of uh, navigating through this whole process that uh, the right thing to do would have counselor assistance. Mm -hmm. Another important piece is that when, as you see up on the PowerPoint, it's an application completion tool, it's very important to realize that this, uh, from the counselor's perspective, and as you, as you noticed, it's offered where people live, learn, work, play, and pray, and many times by volunteers, this does not look complex from the front side and a counselor can feel comfortable in taking a client through it as well the client can feel comfortable about what they're going through mm -hmm. all the complexity is on the back side mm -hmm. and our technology partner is constantly working on that uh, realizing what new forms have come about but the client and the counselor don't see any of that so I just wanted to add that into it. 
Okay, thank you, Lenora. Um, some of the current programs that the Benefit Bank has on its platform, uh, again, with the state applications, it would SNAP, Medicaid, you know, TANF, and on the federal side, the importance of filing your income tax, being able to uh, to uh, have the benefit of the EITC, and where the Benefit Bank also has the has the FAFSA. Uh, we're very cognizant of again creating that pathway to education opportunities. So when they file for FAFSA, that they can also file for the income tax and and both of the information is merged together. Uh, there's a voter registration component as well, and uh, we have the veterans education benefit that uh, we will be putting on the benefit bank uh, uh, platform or benefit of services in November of 2012. Uh, are there any questions so far, any thoughts? Okay, moving forward, uh, here is an example of a family in Amarillo, and uh, just to give a little background, when uh, the Benefit Bank, um, uh, you know, was implemented here at Texas Health Institute, which we are the only uh, state affiliate for Texas, uh, there was regional funding that uh, that is uh, being raised to pay for the portal statewide a three to five year implementation so the Amarillo or the Panhandle area raised their regional funding and so as a result of that by default they became a pilot for the benefit bank here in Texas and uh, and so they've already have started seeing results on the drawdown of, of value and, 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 the, and the dollars coming back into the community. So here's a, a single parent with two children, a, a single parent in college with two children, and uh, her, you know, uh, earning wage is a little over 15000 but yet her expenses, if you can look on the right side, you know, obviously you start adding up. And um, obviously, just by looking at the numbers, she is going to have a hard time graduating from college if she's worried about putting food on the table for her kids and you know paying for childcare and, and just juggling multiple expenses in order for her to concentrate on on her improving her quality of life for her and her family. Uh, and again, the expenses are exceeded by a little over 16000 and this is just, you know, bare bones minimum. So what we did, or what the, what the folks did in Amarillo, our, our site uh, uh, regional coordinator, is worked with her and uh, put her with the probable work supports, you know, okay, let's go ahead and and use the benefit bank, look at all the, uh, what you're potentially eligible for, let's go ahead and apply for them all at one place, and then what she's doing with her is, wor is working with her, uh, getting all the information into the system, because what it's doing, the screens are just asking you general questions, and it's like a TurboTax, where in behind it's pop auto-populating, all the pertinent uh, applications that the the uh, single parent said that she wants to apply for. So when they did that, they found that her income obviously rose a little over thirty four thousand because she was able to secure those worker supports and benefits into her income. Uh, her expenses, uh, you know, a little over thirty one thousand, and so that puts this family at the starting gate, pretty much at the at the beginning line of, of her being able to be successful in graduating and in a pathway to graduating from higher ed, you know, being able to look out for her family, uh, you know, having less stress than she originally had. And, uh, and, and this is what we want to do is get people out of that perpetual cycle and into those pathways to opportunity and uh, improving and strengthening their communities. So how it works is that the Benefit Bank, when you come to a Benefit Bank site, and it's like we're partnering 
with United Ways, with community-based organizations, with faith-based organizations where they have volunteers or staff, they have the location, and then they will, will what we do is bring the web-based portal to their organization. And so when a staff or volunteer trains, they have their own password. Uh, if I'm a client, like I'm, I'm coming in looking in for services and I also have a password. And so each of us sign in to the web-based portal and then we begin the process. Uh, and so, like I said previously, it's it's a you know just general screens that are asking you just general information, and it's auto-populating all the uh, information to the pertinent applications that I've selected. I'm going to apply for, um, and it's and it's a guided process that uh, the expertise is in the system. There's pop-ups that. Uh, if the client does not understand it, the counselor is there to help facilitate, explain uh, the the information as they're as they're going along with it. Uh, but the ownership always always resides with the client uh, because recognizing that families and individuals are mobile, you know, and the population that's being served. Um, they may be in Amarillo, you know, today, but they may find themselves in, in San Antonio, you know, three months from now. So we want to make sure that whatever information they have, that they'll go to another location that has a benefit bank site and they'll update uh, their status or their information so that they can keep connected to the services. Uh, that they're eligible for, or if they weren't eligible for at one point in time, that now they become eligible for. Um, and once they go through that process, and it depends, I mean, it could be one application, it could be four or five applications. So it's a matter of maybe, maybe 30 minutes to an hour and 45 minutes time frame. Um, once they go through all that, and then, then it'll, you know, check for errors, and uh, then you, you know, press the button for, to for it to submit, uh, the application is submitted electronically, and uh, with that, there's a higher accuracy rate because, again, when I said the expertise is in the system, if you were doing it by paper and you didn't realize that you had done a mistake, I mean, it's going to kick, get kicked out and you start all over again. And so the good thing about it that it does have a high accuracy rate. It is filed electronically. The client is, is given a hard copy. And again, because of, of us being in compliance or the benefit bank tool being in compliance with the HIPAA, HIPAA secured um, regulations, we, none of the information is retained on a computer. And one of the things also uh, for you as, as you're listening to this, that at your organization, by becoming a benefit bank site, you're able to request aggregate data on the uh, people that you are serving in regards to, you know, how many people came in to my location, what types of services that they apply for, what types of services did they receive. Uh, you can get the in uh, dollars amount and in, in increments in dollar amounts and, and that breakdown of, of category and if it helps you to report to your board of directors or to your executive staff and or put you in a position to to uh, uh, request for grants and proposals it gives you that sophisticated reporting for you. Here's a, here's a screenshot of uh, the benefit bank uh, when we talked about that if someone can call in to a location that an organization that's a benefit bank or they can stop by and do a, a quick check. And it's, it's a rough estimate on the potential eligibility of benefits based on preliminary or general information that a, that a person gives. And so what they'll do, they'll, they'll, they'll put, you know, pertinent information such as your household size, you know, the person's income, the household income, expenses, you know, whether, you know, you know your uh, salary, how many children, you know, the household information, you know, what are your expenses with regards to rent, mortgage, utilities, and so on. 
And when they do that, then it brings up a, a star rating system. The higher the stars on the rating system, the more probability that this individual or client is potentially eligible for these benefits. And so, um, so what it does, it says, oh, well, this person put in X amount of information, so it looks like they are more than likely eligible for SNAP. And uh, because of the age, you know, they, you know, are also eligible to register to vote. And, you know, they may be a at, at that college age where, you know, if they are looking to go into college, they can also apply. Now, if you look at the hyperlink where it says locate a benefit bank site, if an individual is calling in or maybe they're even going through it, uh, you know, a, on their own and finding out about it, then they can click on the hyperlink to let them know where a, a benefit bank site is located near them. And so it'll tell them here, you know, based on the zip code or the address that they put in, it'll tell them all the different sites that are within, within their uh, vicinity. And uh, it'll have the name of the, the location, which in this case, it's a Salvation, Salvation Army at Amarillo, and it gives the address, phone number. And uh, it, one of the things that I also want to share with you that we have over 100 sites already signed up and established, and we have around 65 sites pending. And so, in some of the organizations that sign up with us, I mean, it could be a, a, a women's battered shelter. And so obviously we are not going to put that site as, as an option for people to know about. Uh, we also have benefit bank sites, um, uh, school districts serving as benefit bank sites. And so that'll have, I mean, while it will be listed, that it'll have a, the description saying not open to the public. Uh, because that is exclusive for the students and the families of those students that that school district is serving in particular. So just to kind of keep, keep in mind, you know, depending on what your background of your organization is and what the outreach is, you know, keep that in mind also. We have also a, a big, uh, uh, a, a pretty good amount of uh, mental health uh, facilities that have signed on. And so some of them, maybe just there's like two or three that signed up for open for public, but the rest of them are not. So you keep that in mind as well. Uh, as I said previously, one of the things that we want to share about the benefit bank as far as a self-serve portal that individuals can do it, um, use it on their own when it comes to doing their taxes and FAFSA because those are linked together and they can use this as a, as a one-stop service to do both applications um, at the same time as well. Um, again, uh, one of the things that we want to uh, impart with you to s sharing with you why the benefit bank site is different because um, in your line of work, uh, there are many tools out there that will say, okay, well, plug in this number or, hey, go to this website and, and what have you. And more than likely, it'll say you are eligible for X, Y, Z. Um, but many times what we come across, and I'm sure you've come across, is like, well, great, if I'm eligible for SNAP and if I'm eligible for TANF, it still doesn't get me to those services and, and, and access to them. It just tells me what pretty much I already knew. But, and so that's why that the benefit bank is different that um, both Lenore and I say it's the E and the A. It's not only the eligibility, but it's also the, the application process for the individual. Um, the tax returns and benefit applications are prepared on a single platform. Basically, it's a one-stop service. You find out your potential eligibility. And you say, yes, I want to go ahead and apply for SNAP. I want to apply for TANF. I want to do my voter registration. I want to do FAFSA, and I want to do my income tax all at one time by just 
but by just providing the general information and it's auto populating it in the back all these applications simultaneously. Uh, in addition to the current uh, uh, applications that we have on the benefit bank, we also, or the benefit bank also has a capacity to add additional applications and links to the portal. For instance, the Veterans Education Benefits is, is uh, a request that we were getting as we've been doing presentations for the, for the past year. And that's something that kept surfacing up. And with a, a lot of the uh, military people that are transitioning into civilian life, I mean, this is something that we can connect them with as far as accessing the education benefits, but then also say like, look, okay, do you need food stamps? Uh, do you need, you know, uh, you know, some other type of service that will be a, 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 a comprehensive application process? Another area or another request that we've been getting as we're doing presentations is the free and reduced lunch program. Uh, so keep in mind if there's something that you're already working with that I'm thinking, well, this would work well, and it would make it stronger or, or strengthen it if I had another program. Think about that. And even if we don't add the complete program, we can put a link to the portal to continue to facilitate that one-stop service for the individual. Uh, we worked over a year with Health and Human Services Commission uh, collaboratively on a memorandum of understanding where through a uh, rider, uh, uh, rider 74 in the 82nd legislative session that, uh, that um, proceeded with increasing the efficiency of benefit applications for the state of Texas. Uh, and so with that, it facilitated that collaboration for Texas Health Institute and Health and Human Services Commission to work together. And as a result, uh, we are able, and I think we are the only ones at this point that has that capability to have the applications filed electronically to Health and Human Services Commission. And it also opens up the opportunity for other organizations to have that pathway and that collaboration sh uh, should they want to file applications electronically with a HHSC. In our training, with filing, uh, with the electronic submission, we're also connecting and encouraging um, families and individuals to sign up for a Your Texas Benefits um, to registration as well. Uh, because we know that the need, that there's so many Texans in need, and uh, the outreach again of 8.3 billion, that no one tool is going to cover everything. However, uh, but we are very cognizant and making sure that as many times that we can have those access points to be met in a, in a one-stop fashion that we want the capability to serve Texans in that capacity. Uh, and again, having um, a, the benefit bank and in partnering with organizations, a very strong component is that people trust uh, you know, the organizations, you know, such as yourselves, uh, uh, you know, with the, with the Collaborative and uh, United Ways or, you know, people frequent their churches. So they're going to trust the people in their community. And that's why it's really, really important that the Benefit Bank is administered in, in that fashion. Again, with the excitement that Amarillo became our pilot uh, area and has, and we already have some success numbers from it, we, the Benefit Bank is uh, already in nine other states, and the first uh, state that has, or brought in the Benefit Bank was Ohio, and they did a, a an investment of I think $15 million for the state, and uh, to date, since 2006, uh, they have drawn down in excess of over $500 million in benefits and worker supports to Ohioans. 
Uh, South Carolina and North Carolina have also, again, in a very short amount of time, maybe like two years, have also uh, drawn down 26 million and 24 million in their respective respective states. So we really have researched it. We have you know looked at other states and what they're doing. You know what are their successes, and we're actually benchmarking uh, off of their successes instead of reinventing the tool on the access and uh, making sure that we administer the one-stop service and the electronic component successfully. With the three to five year implementation that we have here in Texas, given that uh, we have 254 counties and I believe, you know, bigger than Ohio, South Carolina and all our other partner affiliates, we are doing, rolling out the benefit bank in three phases. So again, Amarillo was, well, became, you know, part of the phase one. Uh, we have uh, Fort Worth, Dallas, the Houston area, uh, and the Phase One area. However, because people are learning about the Benefit Bank through our partner organizations, we've already started doing work in San Antonio, uh, in the uh, down in Corpus Christi, uh, Brownsville, Harlingen, McAllen area. And uh, so it's take it, it while we're concentrated on phase one, obviously we're going into other areas. And uh, to me, that's kind of like a, a good uh, opportunity to have. And uh, we're looking to, to each of you to consider in helping us do that outreach. Um, to recap is uh, the Benefit Bank it provides, again, the access to enrollment in places where people live, learn, work, play, or pray, uh, and also just keeping in mind that we want to uh, address that perpetual cycle that individuals and families keep finding themselves in. You know, the, the, the economy, the recession, the climate has actually brought in or identified hidden poor and new poor that people have never found themselves in this situation, but if they can access benefits for during this interim period, then they can concentrate on uh, you know their job search or, or 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 getting new skills to put them in those positions to have you know jobs and and, and work that will keep them employed for. A longer period of time. These are some examples. Again, like I said, we have over 100 sites that have signed up and 65 that are pending. And so these are some examples of uh, benefit bank sites. Uh, we in Texas, uh, we have a, a lot of colleges and universities and schools that are really embracing the Benefit Bank and they're putting it in their schools and uh, their outreach centers or uh, where they do student um, assistance because they're addressing it from the, from, the, from the point that they want to make sure that they graduate their students whether it's high school or whether it's higher ed uh, because it costs money and then they're also addressing the drop out and stop out um, you know, problem that they have. A lot of times in college when a student is going to school and a loved one gets sick or the, or the family household find themselves in some economic distress, that student will stop out of college to help the family with their financial needs and unfortunately more times than not may not ever go back to school. Um, and uh, another uh, analogy that uh, uh, from one of my visits at Texas A&M was is like oh my gosh this is where we can uh, look at the default rate for students because a lot of times they'll get the student loan for their living their household expenses and tuition and books so this is a way of tightening and make uh, that they can get the student loan just for tuition and books and that the benefit bank can connect them with the 
the sustainable components of their living expenses. So it, it, it gravitates or it resonates with people in different ways, uh, but it does hit, stay to the core um, um, thread of, of supporting workers and, and stabilizing families and strengthening communities. There's a two uh, benefit bank roles within each organization as you become a site. Um, there's a site administrator that in their air, respective area oversees all the benefit bank counselors and one of the another strong component one that of the works really well and has a proven success is that there's local and regional ownership of establishing a benefit bank site within your organization, within your community, and within your you know respective region. Because what works for Amarillo and the Lubbock area is not going to work for McAllen or San Antonio, you know Houston or vice versa. So while there's core elements of the benefit bank, we we strongly support the local ownership of it, of the administration and the building up of it. So the site administrator will oversee what works best in their areas and who are the uh, organizations and the key leaders and stakeholders. And the benefit bank counselor is that direct service person that works with the clients, which is basically the individuals and households that come in to find out and, and work with them in filling out the applications. And as you become a benefit bank site, these are some of the requirements. Um, obviously, you have a computer and internet connection. Uh, some of the organizations that have signed up, they you know, have a staff member that may train as a benefit bank. Uh, counselor or they are working with another group that they'll they'll train volunteers uh, you uh, also have the fax capability and uh, because w following our HIPAA secure guidelines we you can't scan anything because it'll leave an imprint so right now you have to fax uh, supporting documents um, and upload them with a cover sheet that identifies it as a benefit bank um, application process. Uh, and then you um, you uh, have to have a, you know, we're obviously re uh, asking for a private space or save on private space. So when someone comes into your organization, you have an area where people can, can work with an individual in filling out the application. Uh, we'll be coming up to the, to the questions, if there's any questions that we may answer, so kind of be thinking about them as we're kind of winding down the presentation. Another uh, a tool that uh, we provide for you as you become a benefit bank site uh, location is that we'll provide you free marketing support. These are um, uh, printed uh, marketing materials that are both in English and Spanish. We just uh, finished printing some for one of our, uh, our benefit bank site partners here in the Hutto area. They're going to do a back to school program and, and give out uh, the flyers and let them know about the benefit bank site and, and then start doing appointments for them to come in and, and find out and apply for a benefit bank site. So. They, they signed up and they're doing that project outreach in their community. The, uh, again, with the benefit bank side, the benefit bank, uh, we do have trained professionals that answer the technical questions and we've come across that and some of our partner organizations have come across that where you know they're working with someone or, or they have some little technical glitch. I mean, they're very responsive, so there's uh, the the different ways where they can you know access and be reached as, uh, to if there's any technical help on the benefit bank. Uh, I'm not sure if y'all can see this uh, screen really well, but there are ten easy steps to becoming a benefit bank side. Uh, what, what I would do, if anyone's interested after this phone call, I can talk to you more about it, a little bit more in depth about it. I can 
you know, visit with you or do a phone phone call. But afterwards, um, I would answer your questions. You know, there's a side agreement that's sent your way. You, you know, you send it back, and that allows us to. Uh, establish some training and because uh, right now with all the requests we have we're trying to do group training of different organizations that we can train um, to optimize the time and the volume of the training that uh, we're, we're getting requests on yes okay and uh, and then from there we'll also send an invoice and for every uh, for an organization that their annual budget is under a million, the annual membership uh, fee is five hundred dollars for a three year period. Of course. And then for a, an organization that is uh, their a million or over, their annual budget is a million or over, the annual membership is a thousand dollars. Uh, annually for a three-year period uh, and just an example of uh, um, Dr. Lerner of uh, Texas Women's University when we did the presentation she said you know we give a lots of scholarships we give thousand dollar scholarships to students very deserving students but imagine what I can do with that one thousand dollar investment that I not only reach one student but I'm able to reach many students in their households and connect them to these services for that, so keep that you know that in mind as far as the outreach that you can do with the either five hundred or the one thousand uh, dollar investment. Um, and we really want to make sure that the volunteers and staff are comfortable with the training. That we'll come and do the training, and then we'll do follow up training, and then you'll get uh, feedback and input on on the training as well. And again, we'll, you can utilize the free marketing materials and um, do the outreach in your local communities as where you see best fit. And so that is uh, the, um, the overall general presentation of the Benefit Bank. I can answer, Lenora and I can answer any questions, specific questions on the process, how it works, uh, anything with becoming a site. Uh, Lenora also um, serves as the regional coordinator for in Central Texas area, and her because purview what, is, is All right, training. thank you, Lenora and, um, and Diana. So, Central were there any Texas questions for anybody? Statewide, but she from has anyone? Concentration in the Central Texas area, so she okay. has more specific knowledge on the training aspect. Um, Lynn is them. here, and she would like to know if y'all are planning on doing Vietnamese at any point. Thank you, Lenora. Translation. Um, Lynn is here, and she would like to know if y'all are planning on doing Vietnamese at any point. Oh, on Vietnamese. We do. We do have the um, right now. We have it in Spanish. In, in aside from English, we have it in Spanish. But yes, there is a request because other states have already been doing it to do it in multiple languages. Okay, and uh, Lynn's, um, excuse me, Lynn's other question I'll, I'll is, um, for more rural partners, areas, would you, off, would you consider offering scholarships for, for very small organizations? I know that you said you had a discount for um, organizations that have under a million dollar budget, but what if it's in a, in a rural area that you feel might specific, really specifically need this service? Another question is, um, for more rural areas, would you, would you consider offering scholarships? For very small organizations, I know that you said you had a discount for um, organizations that have under a million dollar budget. What if it's in a mm -hmm. area that you feel might really specifically need this service? Uh, most certainly, what we want, what we also have, um, we really want to make it a, a. We will work with anyone and everyone because of the importance of accessing Texans to these worker supports and benefits, and that's our main focus. So, we will work in partnering and finding sponsors you know for someone to pay for that five hundred dollar uh, annual fee and in fact we have that situation here in central texas where one sponsor is um, uh, giving us to sponsor four four different organizations at the five hundred dollar level 
So if there is a need for someone says, I really want it, I don't have the money, but I know that there's many families that can be uh, impacted by this, then uh, let us know. And we may know of someone, and most, most times or not, we will know of someone that, that we can match up with a sponsor. Right now we have, um, we have a, a sponsor here, an organization that's sponsored for um, in several of the other regions, we have a, a foundation that wanted to sponsor 15 to 30 sites, and then in another region, a, a foundation that wanted to sponsor at least 10 sites and 20 if they were at the $500 level. So that's always an opportunity. Yes. And um, as Deanna said, when, when an organization is eager to try to help, uh, usually there's another organization that's that's eager to write a check to allow them to help. Mm -hmm. So we can work that out. Yes. And so if there is someone, uh, please uh, uh, send us an email Please. because we, can uh, again, we have and at the end of the five year implementation. foundations and uh, and if they're giving us a number, you know, to fill, we'd be more than happy to have you know an organization, you know, fit them into it. Um, I, I think there's a question here from Melissa that at the end of the five-year implementation plan, what is the expectation of how many counties will be served? Um, our, our, all, our three to five-year implementation is to be statewide in all 254 counties. Uh, the original implementation plan was for three years. Uh, However, you know, with being on the road so much and because we are, are still looking to philanthropy and foundations to pay for the portal, we're doing a simultaneous um, grass tops and grassroots effort on um, the, the funding and, but, at, but the, grass, the grassroots is getting it out there in the counties to be able to get the data so that we'll use the data to get to the foundations and say, look, this is what's working. And, and as they fund us more at the large umbrella type, then we'll be, or expect to be in all 254 counties by year five. And, and further, just to, uh, we do have a business, a strategic business plan uh, with a rollout over five years. And we are hoping to have uh, about 3,000 sites uh, at that time. And um, just kind of to give you a, a, a broad picture, sometimes when we're talking to people, they go, well, why would you need more than a, you know, one site in an area or, or, or a few sites? And, and obviously, as you know, one of the answers to that is transportation and um, trying to get to a site. But the other thing is that, again, people go where they feel the, the most comfortable. So if it's that church that they attend regularly and that church has decided to be a site on a Sunday afternoon, that may be where they want to go. At the same time, on the next corner of the block, there may be an agency. Um, if that's all for questions, we'll go ahead and wrap up. Uh, thank you again so much, um, Deanna and Lenora, for um, giving this presentation. Um, and I also want to thank uh, the program committee for the collaborative for putting together these webinars every month. We have them every fourth Thursday. So thanks to Dr. Uh, Julie Nangia, who's here from Baylor College of Medicine, um, Laura Pena, and um, Lulette Martinez from Harris County Hospital District, who are listening in. Thank you. And also Gina Lawson from BCCS. Um, next month on August 23rd, we, uh, Dr. Nangia will be giving a talk on breast cancer prevention. So you can go ahead and register for that on our website. Um, and thank you again to everybody for listening in. All right, y'all have a good day.